I'm backlit so I look like a silhouette, but you don't care. Check out the view. I am here at the grand opening of the Verizon Application Innovation Center. Uh, a penny to the first person who can guess where we are. In San Francisco, downtown San Francisco, uh, right down across the street from the Embarcadero and the Bay. It's just a spectacular setting. And this is the uh, all kinds of tech journalist superstars walking around. Uh, this is the grand opening of the Innovation Center. Verizon opened a hardware innovation center on the East Coast in Waltham, Massachusetts earlier in the summer. Uh, today is the application center. Waiting for the demos to get started. So let's take a look around. So this really is a facility that allows a uh, developer to develop and you know get access to things that they wouldn't normally have access to. And then again, we have all of the Verizon employees here who are experts in the field. Right. So you have expert advice as well as physical devices in some situations, as well right. as you know brainstorming and, ideas and, and things like that. And the so. staff isn't limited to engineers. I mean, having the engineers at your disposal is awesome, but there's other Verizon staff as oh, well. Oh, absolutely. In this, in this facility, there's uh, engineers, there's marketing personnel, there's a number of people here. So. Gaming and entertainment. What's going on in here? We've got NVIDIA, we've got Samsung, Qualcomm, Snapdragon logo. Let's see what's going on inside. So we're here with Andrew Sophie from the Verizon Application Innovation Center. Uh, we're in the dev lab for gaming. Right, so uh, so welcome. This is a dev lab. This is a place where developers would be uh, working on a typical day here at the, uh, the Innovation Center. Um, and what we're showing you over here is the Qualcomm MDP. This is a mobile development platform that uses the uh, Snapdragon processor. Uh, it's a dual core 1.2 gigahertz, so it represents uh, the next generation Snapdragon coming hopefully to a phone soon. Um, so Andrew, we're running uh, a 1080p 3D stream, basically two 1080p streams off of the uh, the reference platform? Exactly, so it's creating two 1080p streams off of the, the MVP as you said. Um, it's actually upscaling to 1080 right now as you know things are, are improved to be actually fully, you know, fully native uh, rendered in 1080, um, but right now it's, it is in 1080, um, it's upscaled. This example here is actually um, taking OpenGL content and being able to actually create S3D content dynamically at the touch of a button. So by optimizing for the Adreno GPU in this uh, in this development platform, you're able to add S3D you know to your game. And you can notice that we're in 3D here, and then we can pop it off um, without any extra work. So the important thing, you know, no additional assets. You create the textures for Adreno, or you know, create the texture uh, conversion utility. And you know, there you are. You have S3D content, so no additional. Answer. This is a room that you typically see configured, you know, for developers to come in, um, you know, work with a prototype device, um, test something out, you know, get some hands-on time with an engineer, etc. Um, what we're showing you today on the left um, is a Samsung Galaxy 10 um, tablet, 4G LTE tablet, Tegra 2, powered by Tegra 2, and you're seeing an example of those graphics here on the screen. The interesting part is we're actually using a Bluetooth controller uh, to control Riptide, which is a vector. Game. And this is a Bluetooth controller that's using some of the, the things that have been integrated into Honeycomb. And our good friends at NVIDIA have actually, you know, put together some great documentation to help you weed through, uh, you know, the, the, the Google uh, documentation. So, you know, the typical thing, a developer would come in here, we'd help them kind of, you know, grab a hold of that NVIDIA documentation, point them in the right direction, maybe gives them some tips on best practice, things we've learned along the way. And in the end, you know, help them troubleshoot if something isn't going right. So it's a... Uh, you know, just another day kind of around here kind of helping you know, a new uh, new app kind of get touchpad support or uh, Bluetooth uh, control support. All right, so now we're in the developer tools area. Uh, you can see your lovely sponsors there. And we're going to talk to Brett, who's going to show us a couple of very interesting augmented reality apps uh, powered by Qualcomm. Yeah, this is using Qualcomm's augmented reality toolkit. And this game was made by the, the company Big Player. And it is a augmented reality basketball game. So this is a, a, a basketball ticket, and the game board is overlaid on top of that. So as you see, when you're moving this around, it, it, it actually reacts in real time. Right, so this isn't just a graphic of a, a basketball court on the screen. This is interacting with the ticket. Correct. Which is what you just said. I had to say it again so I'd understand <laughs> it, because you know, I'm a little slow sometimes. Yeah, I mean, you can zoom in on the guy. You can see the their surrounding, it's it's built in 3D space, and then it, it just plays as the game board. It overlays the digital onto the physical. Can I, can I harass him to make him miss a shot? Uh, you miss, know, you might miss. be able to. <laughs> Very cool. So this would be an idea of something. You'd be at the game, you get your ticket, 
and then you know there's a little I mean it's, it reminds me of a QR code but, absolutely uh, but much much more interesting to look at it's based on the same technology as a okay. QR code using image recognition and then just displaying a 3D uh, environment on top of that and just because people are going to ask you're running on a, is this an Ex, uh, Xperia? yes it's okay. an Xperia Play by Sony Ericsson okay. oh the Play right okay yep. and then Inch High Stunt Guy Inch High Stunt Guy that this is an application that is not uh, currently on the market, but it's it's you have this little stunt man that needs to complete uh, an obstacle course. Let me pull this out back a little bit. Restart this. So the point is that there's these ob these um, different objects that you have to place to help him complete his obstacle course. So I've got the little speed boost and the ramp. And when I hit go, he's going to do his thing, drive through, awesome. So you have to move the device around to keep him... You, you move the objects around you move the, the objects around. Oh, I see. Yep. Okay. So, like, these, these are the, the movable objects. Right. And then when you were panning the device... That's just to, to check out the different angles. Okay, so you, cool. can, okay. you can zoom in on the little guy as he's crashing and burning right there. Right. That is wild. And you can, I mean, the same thing. These are all 3D... Right. Real time rendered. And so these are the types of tools, access to the developer toolkit and you know support from the experts in exactly. the lab or the, the kinds of things you guys want to be providing. Right, exactly. That's the point, is that we are providing these tools and helping the developers use them in order to create and ship successful products. Very cool. I, uh, I think there may be a uh, augmented reality buffalo, I don't want to say hunt the buffalo, but you know, let the buffalo roam app in our future. We'll, have to, we'll talk about, about that and get back to you. All right. Brett, very cool. Thank you. Thanks a lot.